God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Miracle Mission Full Gospel Church, where the overseer, Dr. James A. Lewis, is our senior pastor, and our pastor is Zandra Lewis. Amen. I am Pastor Marquita Whitehead, the executive pastor here at Miracle Mission Full Gospel Church, and we just want to welcome you on this evening for a great night of Bible study. Amen. I bless God for the opportunity to once again be in the state in the absence of our overseer and pastor. We truly, truly, truly pray for them in their absence and their traveling. We bless God for the thing that's called rest. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus. So, Father, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Lord, we ask right now, O oh Father, that you enter in, O oh Father. Continue, O oh God, to reside in us, O oh God. We're asking right now, O oh God, that you give us a heart to be forgiving, O oh Father, for all the sins that we have done against you, ourselves, and your people, O oh Father. We know, O oh God, that it has been very challenging. But today is a new day, O oh God, with new grace, with new mercies, with greater love, with greater compassion, with greater patience, O oh God. We bless your holy name for being El Shaddai. We thank you, O oh God, for being Rapha. We bless your holy name for being faithful. We thank you, O oh God, for being the God of love. We honor you, O oh God, right now for all the things that you have done, all the things that you're doing, and all the things that you're going to do, oh Father. So we ask, oh God, those that, oh God, can hear right now, oh Father, let them have an ear to hear, oh God. We bless your holy name, oh God, for those that have stopped, oh God, their day just to receive, oh God, an understanding of you, more knowledge of you, oh God, more uh, desire, oh God, to be closer to you through this study, oh Father. So in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you arrest my flesh, oh God, and allow the Holy Spirit to Oh, God, arise in me, oh, God, to teach this word with clarity, to teach this word with authenticity, to teach this word of the truth, oh, God, with power and authority, with compassion, oh, Father, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. This is my prayer on today, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. The Bible says when two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst. So I thank God for uh, the four of us that's up in here, amen, amen. touching in the grin, amen. And all the millions of people that is watching across uh, the social media, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. I ask that you go and get your Bible, a pen and paper, because I have some uh, awesome notes that the Lord has downloaded in me to uh, regurgitate to you so that you can be empowered by this study. Amen. Um, I'm going to continue the study that our overseer has placed uh, over this house and for the region, amen, to the nations, amen, commitment, what commitment means. I'm going to actually teach uh, from tonight something that a lot of people don't want to uh, discuss or, uh, you know, have conversation with someone such as myself. I am going to uh, give a disclosure um, simply because God has made me peculiar just like he made you all peculiar. But if we were to be honest with each other, all of us have some commitment issues. Yeah. Father, help me up in here. Yeah. So the topic today is commitment issues. Amen. And I just want to be transparent um, that every day we have to be transparent with God to identify what our commitment issues are, amen? So I am led to give you a, a, a piece of information that was given to me in my ordination training by my uh, late mentor, Prophetess Amelia Kava. She was a powerful woman of God that taught many, that poured into many, that rebuked and corrected many, that guided many. So I bless God for me being able to be in her presence and sit at her feet. Um, this uh, passage that I'm going to give you, it also helped me lay the foundation of my God-given ministry, Divas for Christ Incorporated. So when I started to just go through some of my notes uh, regarding commitment, uh, it helped me to be convicted regarding my leadership position here in Miracle Missions Full Gospel Church. 
that is where we have to be transparent uh, when we identify our commitment issues. The passage is uh, written by a man called Mr. Yi, Eric Yi, and it is uh, it records such as this. Lately, I have more of a burden for my small groups and classes. I sense people cringing inside whenever we pray that our small group or class members be more committed. But is that a bad thing? I touched on this earlier, but commitment in the Christian text is meant for us to know, to love, and obey God more. And through, and though knowing uh, and living for God more, we experience the full measure of joy in God. That's from John 17, 13. He continues to say, I think some might be confused I think some might be confusing commitment with obligation. Make mental note of that. Commitment and obligation. We never want people to feel trapped in a corner to do things, but rather have them choose to do things. And when doing things, we never want people to feel it as a burden, but rather a privilege. Remember that, burden and privilege. I really think it, it's all about perspective. If our first priority is God, our small groups and classes becomes a commitment and a decision to choose the full measure of joy. But if our first priority is anything else other than God, then our small groups and classes becomes an obligation that hinders us from doing whatever our first priority is, which is obeying and following and loving God. Amen? So in that conclusion, I came to a conviction because I am one who loved the Lord and I am very open about telling you. Amen? I don't have no shame in my game. Everybody knows that Pastor Q loves the Lord. Everybody knows that my first priority is him and his kingdom. Now, am I a perfect person? No. But everybody knows <laughs> that I am serious about God's business. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Trying to share it through mentoring many others, teaching people, preaching his word, and more importantly, I do my best to try to live his word. That is a commitment. I don't call it or feel as though it's an obligation. I choose to do so. And that is the difference between the commitment and the obligation. I have made a choice to make God a priority. And in the commitment issues, many people are challenged with making God a priority. Amen? So, uh... In my experience, uh, I've experienced full measure of his joy. Anybody else in here enjoy uh, God's joy upon you? Amen. His peace. Amen. That's why I say my peace is priceless. I can't give it up. Amen. I've experienced it. That makes me stay committed to him because I have received some of his promises. Amen. His mercy. I know about his mercy. Amen. So I want to stay committed to him. I know about his grace. So I want to stay committed. I know about his faithfulness. So I want to stay committed. Here you go. I know about his holiness. Father, help me up in here. I want to stay committed. It is a choice. I know about his sovereignty. I experienced it. I've experienced his patience. And this is where conviction entered into me. My patience has worn thin. I've come to Miracle Mission to uh, gain <laughs> compassion. <laughs> Father, I believe I accomplished that. I, I'm, I'm more compassionate than I was when I first came. So I've grown in compassion, but I've uh, started to diminish in patience. So it convicted me, which made me have to check myself about my commitment to God. Yeah. 
Father, help us up in here. It's a teaching session, right? I can go on and on to say about how, you know, his love keeps me committed to him. How his uh, promises of uh, peace of mind, amen, keeps me committed to him. How he continues to protect and provide for me when it doesn't seem as though nobody else cares of what's going on. I am committed to God. So I pray that um, I, I'm giving you some illustrations that will illuminate in your own life how this teaching will become revelatory to you in your commitment to God. Amen. The uh, dictionary.com uh, defines commitment as this. The act of committing, pledging, or engaging yourself. Um, my Bible dictionary uh, defines commitment as the state or quality of being dedicated to cause, to activate, to devote, an allegiance, loyalty, faithfulness. It is a bond. It is an adherence. It is a pledge or undertaking of a vow, a promise. A oath, a covenant, a pact or a deal. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm gonna ask again. Do you have some commitment issues? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right? So then I said, let me help you understand what obligation is. Obligation is defined as something by which a person is bound or obligated to do certain things and which arises out of a sense of duty or result of custom, law, or tradition. Okay. Father, help us. Oh, God, help us. Amen? So the difference between commitment and obligation, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I see uh, the basic difference I see is that commitment is something we choose to do, Whereas an obligation is something we are forced to do. Amen? Amen? Basic and simple. Okay, commitment issues. The reason why many people fail to complete a task, follow through, show up, be on time, participate, put forth an effort, speak or be positive is because some shape, form, or fashion, they are being forced rather than making a personal choice to do so. Again, conviction. Amen? And in this transition of you understanding, are you doing things for the kingdom and your personal life by obligation, or are you truly operating through the commitment of your relationship with God? Because if you operate through the commitment with your relationship with God, your personal will automatically flow with commitment rather than obligation. Amen? And the reason why I can say that is because we know that we have an obligation to take care of home. Right? You don't take care of home, <laughs> you won't have one. <laughs> Ain't that something? If you don't take care of the house of God. You won't have one. There are many houses of prayer that has opened and closed due to the fact of their obligation to the world and not the commitment to God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. We have to understand that when we commit ourselves to God, God has promised. If he has an obligation then to fulfill his promise. The word cannot come back void, which means Jesus, the Father of God, cannot come back void. Amen? So everything that we know, we have to make a conscious decision. That is one of the greatest gifts that God has given us is the ability to choose. You have the ability to choose to commit or to obligate. And if you choose to obligate, it's not going to work good for you because you're going to feel forced. And forced people don't show up. Forced people don't be on time. Forced people is always negative. Forced people is not does not have the spirit of unity. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. When we sit back about and, and think about how our walk, personal, make it personal now, your walk with God, how has your commitment to him 
made your spiritual well-being healthier. I'm talking about your spiritual well-being. I'm not talking about your body, your health. I'm talking about your spiritual well-being. Because when an affliction come upon you, you're not worried about death. You are claiming your healing. Father, I bless your holy name. It don't matter what the doctors say. It don't matter if you uh, have an allergic reaction to medicine. You still calling upon the Lord saying, I am healed yeah. by your stripes. Commitment comes from that. Not obligation to the world to make the doctors obligated to cure an illness. Father, I bless you. Not obligation through a medicine to help you get better. God, I bless your holy name. Not an obligation to a job that is going to send you a paycheck and a pink slip. Father, I bless you. When you sit back and you think about the commitment to God, he said that he shall supply your every need according to his riches and glory. Amen? God's kingdom never go bankrupt. You don't have to worry about the kingdom shutting down. You don't have to worry about no scandals. God, I bless your holy name. You don't have to worry about how you're going to be provided for and protected because his commitment never runs dry. Amen? Amen. We have to understand how are we surrendering ourselves to God fully because in the fullness of surrendering, we will start to identify our commitment issues. Father, I bless your holy name. And from that identifying of the, uh, the commitment issues, then we will start to surrender to leadership where leadership will be able to help us and show us through teaching, through preaching, through the meditation, through fasting, through prayer, on how to deal with the issues of commitment. Father, I bless you. So we have to understand. I'm going to give you these uh, scriptures here. And um, it's going to, it's a, it's a pattern that uh, if you write them down, it's going to be, it's going to be so lovely. Just write the scriptures down, right? This is your assignment. World Wide Web, everybody that's uh, watching, this is the assignment. If you take these scriptures and just use them as a sentence and then put it together as a paragraph, this will be a prayer to combat your commitment issues. Amen? This is how God gave it to me, so this is how I'm giving it to you. It is a prayer that once all together, you'll see if you pray this daily, three, four times a day, the, the, uh, uh, it depends on how your uh, commitments issues, how deep your commission <laughs> commitment issues run. <laughs> Amen. First one is love. Matthew 22, 37 records, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The first tactic to use to uh, tie up that demon of false commitment, lack of commitment, is love. Amen? Love conquers all. Amen? Next scripture, you have to seek. Matthew 6, says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. So we love, we seek. Amen? And then we have to cleanse. James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded people. We have to be honest on where we are. Right? He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. So he's talking to all of us because it's an S. All of us have sinned and fall short, uh, short of God's glory, right? Mm -hmm. Don't think you just because you did real good today. I ain't talked to nobody. <laughs> I had to see nobody. You know, I, I ain't, no, no, I laid in the bed all day long, right? I was under the influence of some medication, so I, I ain't sinned none. <laughs> 
the medication. I, I took it as prescribed, so I, I, I ain't even mess up the instructions. I didn't sin today. <laughs> Right? That, that, that's how we use excuses, right? Yeah. We, we make everything about us and how we fail to acknowledge where we've fallen short. But God says, purify your hearts. Amen? Because yeah. that makes us double-minded when we make excuses as to we know we sinned, but we give him reason as to why we did it. Help us, Jesus. Okay. Next word. Is knowledge. Amen? Psalms 25 and 4 records, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. See, you have to have knowledge of him. Make me know. Know is knowledge. You have to know the Lord and his ways. Amen? And then you even go further to say, teach. Now, I got another scripture for teach, but it says, teach me your paths. Amen? So when we ask God to know him, because we love him, and we've sought him, and we now are cleansed, he's going to be easy to give us his knowledge. Amen? So after that, after the knowledge, you have to understand that as you come into his knowledge, you will start to renew yourself. Amen? And Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Not holy and acceptable to man. It says holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we just said cleanse. Cleanse, cleanse our double mind. Here, now we have a renewed mind that by testing you may discern... Knowledge, now you can discern because you have the knowledge of God. Amen? Discern what is the will of God that is good and acceptable and perfect. Now it, it starts to tie in. Because when you love, you seek. When you seek, you cleanse. When you cleanse, you gain knowledge. When you gain knowledge, you start to renew. And when you start to renew, you start to trust God. Trust. Proverbs 3 and 5 through 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will straighten your path. Do not, uh, be not wise by your own eyes. It keeps, when, when, when this passage says, be not wise by your own eyes, it keeps you renewed because you are stayed focused on God. Amen? It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. My God, I bless your holy name. It will be healing to your flesh and a refreshment to your bones. Do you see what, how it goes when you start to understand your commitment issues? I'm going to get to that just a little bit. This is the trust. Now, when you have trust, you can start to operate in faith. Amen? Hebrews 11 and 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever will draw near to God must believe that he exists and that his rewards those who seek him. Father, I bless your holy name. It all comes back in full circle once you start to commit to God because once you uh, uh, receive the faith, the faith in him. See, we, we, we say that uh, our trust builds faith because in the faith, we know that God is trustworthy. Amen? So we have to understand the faith now allows us to be vulnerable. How is that? I'm glad you asked. Psalms 143 and 10 says, teach me to do your will. Teach. So you have faith, and once you have faith, now you're vulnerable and you're open to be taught. 
Amen? And in the teaching, it says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. You acknowledge where the teaching is coming from. Father, I bless your holy name. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Father, I thank you. So you have to understand where you was. You was in the bottom of the pit. <laughs> Amen? And you, you got it. And, and the only way that you was able to come out of the pit, you had to love the Lord. <laughs> you had to seek him even greater. You had to cleanse yourself. You had to gain knowledge. And from that knowledge, you start to renew. And from the renewing, you started to trust more. And from the trust, your faith uh, started to grow. And from the growing of your faith, you are able to now be taught. And now you're on level ground. See, when you're on level ground, you can be in the valley. When you're on level ground, you can be on top of the mountain. Where your teaching level at? Father, I bless your holy name. Commitment issues. People don't want to be taught. Yeah, I know it. Because, see, once you are able to be uh, taught, the next word is training. Now you're vulnerable to the teaching and you're eager to train because you want to do what you've learned. Help me, Father, up in here. Training. Titus 2 and 12 says, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. Father, I bless your holy name. How are you living today? I'm not talking about how you lived yesterday. I'm not talking about how you lived in your teenage years. I'm not talking about how your grand grandmama and your mama lived. I'm talking about how you living today. If you are have a teachable spirit, then that will ignite your training, your desire to do better. When you know better, you do greater. Amen? We don't equal. Don't equal that. When I know better, I do better. The devil is a liar. Stop saying that. Change your language. When you know better, you do greater. Amen? When you are able to uh, be trained because of your teaching, because of your faith, because of your trust, because of your renewal, because of your knowledge, because of your cleansing, because of your seeking, because of the love that you have, now you're able to live in freedom. Amen? Freedom, Colossians 2 and 8. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit according to human tradition." According to the elements of spirits of the world and not according to Christ. Father, help us up in here. See, you can't love and then seek and then be cleansed and then have the knowledge and the renewing and the trust and the faith and the teaching and the training and become free and still operate like the world is operating. You have commitment issues. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. amen. So when we sit back and we think about how God has shown us how to uh, deal with our commitment issues, the last uh, scripture I have for you is, are you able to truly commit? Proverbs 16 and 3 says, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Now, if you ever question God why your plans have not been established, here I would say you need to check your commitment level with God. God, why haven't you did this? Why haven't you... <laughs> Showed up. Why? Why don't I have uh, that uh, job yet? Why don't I have the finances and I've been saving? Why don't I have peace in my my house and, and and I'm the only one living up in there? Father, I come home and all I do is think about what then happened at work, what then happened in my church, what then. You don't have peace, Father. 
help us. It said, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So if you have, if, if, if you're the one that starts something and never finish it, you got commitment issues. And then you want to take and, 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 and blame everybody. Won't look in the mirror. Won't take, here you go, be rare. You won't be responsible, Adam. You won't be accountable, A. You won't be uh, uh, respectable to yourself and to other people. That's the other R. And you definitely are not the E, which is effective communicator. You're not rare, and you don't know how to give TLC. The world says tender love and care. Divas for Christ says talk, listen, and consider. You have commitment issues. So the only way that you can deal with these commitment issues is through Matthew 22, 37, uh, where it is, speaks of love. Matthew 6 and 33, where it speaks of seek, seeking God. James 4 and 8, where it tells us to cleanse ourselves and to draw near to God. Psalms 25 and 4, where it tells us to uh, seek God for his knowledge. And teach you his pathways. Romans 12, 1 and 2. The renewing of your mind. To cleanse yourself. To test yourself. So that you can have a discerning spirit. To do good. To be acceptable and perfect. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not only when you're in trouble, not only when you need something, trust in the Lord when all your heart, when it's good, bad, and ugly, when them, that, and those don't agree with you. When you feel all by yourself, that's called sanctification, not loneliness. Help me, Jesus, when you have the faith, you got to understand without faith, you are not pleasing God. You have to have the faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. You have to have a teachable spirit. Psalms 143 and 10. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. You claimed him to be your father. Father, I bless your holy name. You have to be willing to be trained. You can't be taught and not trained. Two different things. Titus 2 and 12. That's training. You got from all of that, you're going to have your freedom. Now, <laughs> Colossians 2 and 8 tells us, don't let nobody take you back into captivity. That's, that's, that's the worldly way. That's demonic, which means you need to start all over again. That's why the Bible tells us that we need to uh, uh, die daily to our flesh. When you feel as though you made it, you didn't lost. You didn't, you didn't backtrack. When you feel you got this thing, you, you didn't messed up because that's how the enemy comes in. When you feel it's okay, you don't need, you can skip a Sunday. You don't need to read your word today. It's okay not to fast all year long. Fasting and praying is what sends the demons, some demons. You need a fast and a prayer. Don't want to turn down your plate, turn off your TV, turn off your phone. Don't, don't want to, Father, we free. <laughs> you can't go back. And then once you do all that, you'll start to work stronger on your commitment with God. It'll be easy. I, I'm telling you, when I don't miss church unless I'm out of town. I don't miss my church service unless I'm out of town or in the hospital. It's snowing, it's raining, I don't care what it is. I got to be in the house of the Lord. That's how committed I am to the Lord. I got to, I don't care if the people don't like me, I'm still going to teach you. I'm still going to love you. I'm still, I'm still going to be there for you. Regardless. Because I'm committed to God. The commitment carries weight. The commitment opens Doors that you didn't even ask to be open. Commitment gives you a healing, a strength of God that I don't care how bad you jacked up, you still trust God. You still have hope. You still have love. So I say to you, 
ladies and gentlemen, across the world. Check your commitment issues. Really take these scriptures. Put them in a paragraph. Pray every day for it and just watch your life start to change. And you can take that with any other scripture. I'm encouraging you to take scriptures that empowers you. Put it into a paragraph and just make your own prayer. Amen? Amen. I have given you what thus says the Lord and what he has given me. I'm asking if there's anyone that's watching right now that does not have a relationship, a firm foundation with God, that you have not given your life to Christ, now is the time to do so. God said that he's willing, he's ready, he's able to receive you at any given moment, in any shape, form, or fashion. And if it's me from this pulpit and you sitting on your couch or driving in the car or just having uh, at the dinner table, please, and you haven't received God, receive him now through this prayer. Father, I have sinned. I'm asking, oh God, that you forgive me. Forgive me and come into my heart. I repent right now for everything that I've done against you, myself, and my fellow man. I know that, God, you have sent your son to live, to be crucified, to die, to rise again, and to come back for your children. I am one of your children by this repentance prayer. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I accept you as my Father, and I truly trust the Holy Ghost to keep me covered until your return. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Again, in the absence of our overseer, Dr. James A. Lewis, and our pastor, Zandra Lewis, I am Pastor Marquita Whitehead, the executive pastor of Miracle Mission Full Gospel Church. I thank you for uh, allowing us to impart God's word in you. To all from all the officers here at Miracle Missions, know that we are a praying church and we are a church that believes in miracles. And if you just commit to God, trust and believe, your plans will be established. Dig deep and identify your commitment issues with God. Go to him. He's waiting on you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday at 12 noon. If the Lord is willing. In Jesus' name. Amen.